team. Let's make it a good one. Annihilation. Uh, maybe not that one. Right. Oh, I can ask him. What killed the Axford last game? All right, it's going to be a little while, so let's see what the shipyard has for us. Oh boy, do I want to share this cancer? I don't think so. Oh, never mind, that's a 12k fleet, so we won't share that. What's in here? Beam array? Hmm... Is anyone really interested in a beam array? Nah, I don't think so. Interesting missile designs. Um, yes, but this lobby actually filled up very quickly, so... Maybe we will do them after this match. Um, there, there's a couple of missile designs I like, uh, but I think the, the space is a lot more open after the OSP update. Uh, we recently had ARADs get reduced in points from four to two points, which opens up a lot more missile designs featuring them. Um, ARAD is especially good right now because when you fire it, it has a, a home on jam baked in, which creates a situation where, so say you're firing an ARAD at, um, well, let's just do, do an OSP ship as an example. So let's say you, you fired ARAD and they want to jam the missile. Now your missile is automatically tracking their jammer. So they say, oh no, it's ARAD. So they shut that off and then they turn their radar off, right? Well, if you have been sneaky and put a backup seeker uh, on your radar, on your ARAD, let's say it's ARAD and then active radar. Well, now they've turned their radars off. They can't even see the missile coming anymore, but your missile is still going to track them because it has an active radar backup. So it's a situation where if they turn their radar on so they can see and engage with like AMMs and some of the, the longer uh, ranged point defense, then they can't do that. So the only way to dodge a missile built like that is you have to turn your radar off and you have to drop chaff. But you have to drop chaff either manually or have it go off before you turn your radars off because if you turn your radars off you can't see the missiles coming so i i like that design a lot right now uh let's see some other good things um i i like command uh either just as a primary or like with a with a wake backup or something i've always liked command um they're really good against osp against ans oh you just have to be aware that it is possible for them get to jam for them to be jammed but command jamming is kind of like a unicorn of nebulous despite the fact that it's super powerful in the right circumstances just so many people don't bring it and osp the only way for them to even bring command jamming is on an Acello. And even then, despite how strong it can be, if you put a bunch of jamming on an Acello, it's still a 50-50 right now that I even see command jamming even brought. Now there's a starter fleet featuring an Acello that comes with the EO Dazzler, 
the radar 360 jammer and the command 360 jammer and that's just like a god of missile jamming uh, very few setups Th that arad active radar is one of the few that will get through that combination but like it used to be very popular to fire something like a extended radar with an eo tip on it and that will just get obliterated by that setup it, it won't come uh, anywhere near the jamming ship um eo is amazingly good against ans uh just because you know obviously there's no way for them to jam that so and that's always going to be good if you want to put just an EO seeker on a container, I think they come out to six or seven points that way. Something, something really cheap that you can just throw a whole bunch of them. ANS hates that. There is no way to soft kill those missiles. Oh, I was talking so much we did not get to go through the predictions. Oh well. Here's a T-30. By the way, if anyone is new here and wonders what I'm talking about when I say all of these three-letter acronym weapons, uh, let me know. I'd be more than happy to explain what the weapons are and what they do. Okay, Kim Nebulous coming out with the plasma T-30 combo. I'm, I understand why ships are split like this. Uh, because you get the buffing of ammunition elevators here, and you get the buffing of... Uh, bu 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 bu, where is it? It doesn't have any... Oh, it doesn't have any. Anyway, you can split the, the buffing because these, the plasma are technically energy weapons, whereas these are, you know, they benefit from ammunition elevators. But personally, I'm a much bigger fan... Don't buff stone walls. Stone walls are amazing. You just have to take enough of them. Personally, I'm a fan of mixing it up and having plasma on the T-30 ship and not making just a dedicated ship like this. It allows you to split up the ships if you need to. <laughs> yes. Don't don't buff stone walls more. They are amazing. Um, yeah, I prefer to have the mix ships, even if they don't get all of the buffs together and stacked like that, it might be a little less. Uh, ooh, S2 coming out. It might be a little less optimized, but as far as actual usability, it, it's greatly uh, more, in my opinion. Uh, one of my favorite fleets right now is the Plasma T30. Are these? No, these are not mine containers. Where are these going? Are they going to murder something on D? No, because there's nothing there. That's unfortunate. There they go, straight through D. This is a very popular play. Normally you wait until someone is capturing the point before you do it. Yep, sorry John Nebulous. Oh. He wasn't firing the missile. All right, where were we? Uh, container ship armed with... No, this is a line ship. Armed with enemy cruise size twos. The enemy secured zone Unfortunately, he's fired 30% of his missiles already and not hit anything. That's unfortunate. Meanwhile, over here, we've got a 450 with some container utility. Gonna guess an EWR and show me rocket shuttles. Nope. Nope. Nope and nope. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, looks like this is a point defense capping flight. A little confused by that. LRT and an EWR, I'm going to guess. Yep. And uh, finally, we have the 450 Acello with a T-30 Plasma on the other side of its map, on the map. Are these rocket shuttles? Yes, these are rocket shuttles. All right, now we're in business. A lot of jamming on them. Interesting choice. Meanwhile, we have on the ANS team 
a 450 battleship, two 450 battleships. This one has a beam on the front. Interesting. A point defense frigate, a beam array. Only three. Are these also armed with missiles then? Yes. And gonna guess this is a missile Axford. I I love this design. I have a ship built like this. You've got S3Hs on the top and a beam for when you run all out. And I think this will play very well against OSP. Uh, I was a bit distracted catching up here. Initial deployment, we have the BB on the left, the BB on the right. Looks like they're moving into Overwatch position. Yeah, I guess they are cap shuttles. I don't normally see cap shuttles that have that EWAR and that sensor package. It's almost more like they're escorts. They are. Yeah, so this is a this is a lot of points just for a P60. Well, I suppose it has AMMs also. Yes. Okay. And that makes the other pair the capping group or it's just I don't know I'm a little confused by that design meanwhile oh we have a hang up here that's interesting it looks like it's firing on an elint not sure anyway the rest of the fleets we have the Axford and the DDs are both backstopping at D. Meanwhile, there is a capping group on A. Looks like no one is doing anything about it, so uncontested. There's plenty of missiles available, especially from this missile Axford that could be going down there and doing something about it. Looks like that is not going to be the case. Or we'll have to see. It has to clear this rock. I believe these are probably direct fire missiles on that version of the Axford. EWR coming out, spotting what it can spot. And there go the jammers. So probably they were locked on to a signature that then got lost and either a pinard or something else happened there that they just fired off into another. <laughs> Looks like these shuttles have said no, go away, fired all of their jammers at this one Axford, which has 120s on the side. That's interesting. It's putting an awful lot of eggs into the 120 basket if containers get shot at this, well, there are no containers. If missiles get shot at this Axford, it's going to have a very, very bad day with only two 120s per side. So there is a hang up. There are no mines, but so one of the things uh, that's good about taking a hang up versus OSP is a lot of times you can use it to interrupt their communication between their long range radars and the fleeting question. Um, the strength of the hang-up is dictated by how far the ship that you're firing the hang-up is from whatever you want to jam it from. So you're jamming the receiving, you're not jamming the sending, if that makes sense. So if you isolate a fleet and you fire a jammer, uh, a hang-up at it, and its closest radar is... 10 kilometers or 12 kilometers away that means it's not getting its radio signals to you you can then follow that up with a blanket and they won't be able to see you at all they lose the advantage of that long range radar so because of that if you fire it in conjunction with a ship like this that has blankets and has the hang up together that's when you can actually blind an osp fleet and that doesn't work against the ANS firing a hang up like in the old ANS versus ANS because the Axfords and the battleships actually have like a more powerful radio. But OSP only has access to that on a Nacello. 
So many, many fleets uh, from the OSP side do not have... Ooh, here comes a big missile strike. As predict... Wow. That was a very strong AMM hit. As predicted, these 120 PD cannot do anything against a concentrated strike. There go a whole bunch of S2s into this hull. Looks like it took out the CIC and there comes the rage quit. So unfortunately uh, that that player is out. I do understand that sentiment. It can be very very frustrating to get hit by a huge uh, missile wave like that. But uh, say la vie. Yep, there is certainly a lot of 100 mil fire coming out. This is the power of 8 T-30 cannons on one ship. Whatever, and the thing about it is that was only half of its firepower because it's not angled correctly. Once these other T-30s come out, just the sheer amount and volume of fire is absolutely crazy. Uh, looks like it might be out of range. Not sure why the plasma isn't being fired. Oh, there it goes. All eight cannons firing at once. Well, still only four. <laughs> soon, soon the rest will fire. There they go. There's the rest of the volley. Oh, but the beams have gotten into range. That was a little unexpected. Can't see ranges here, so... Unfortunately, this, uh, this plasma line ship getting toasted. These T-100s uh, firing HE, I believe, as 25. Either that or... Firing AP is enough to gun down these... Oh, some rockets coming in. Oh. Those may have just been tester rockets. Looks like, yep, they haven't fired everything. But between this and the 100 mil fire and more rockets coming, not a whole lot of time left for this DD group to live. The thing about this 100 mil firing AP into a destroyer like this is it can kill this beam incredibly quickly. And it does it from 7.2 kilometers, whereas the beam... Here come the rest of the rockets. Let's watch these hit. There they go. Gutting that one. Gutting that one. They're both dead. All of them are dead. There, <laughs> there comes another rage quit. Yep. I, I do... Oof. I do understand, um, you know. Well, in his defense, all of his ships were dead. I mean, absolutely. This was dead. This is dead. These are both dead. <clears throat> it, it is very... Um, it is very common uh, for... for a player that takes a hit like this to just leave, unfortunately. But in hindsight, hmm? they weren't marked, surrendered. Oh, no, I mean, this ship is is not actually dead. Uh, I, I meant more like between the fire that was coming in and the fact that they took those rocket strikes there was not a way to pull out of that uh, especially DDs anyway that leaves the two battleships to hold down the fort for ANS let's see what they're gonna do they've moved into a central position guarding the points they have luckily these rocket shuttles have fired the majority of their rockets now. Probably not enough left to outright kill 
a battleship just with a rocket strike. Looks like that beam is turning. It sees the shuttles. It wants to get that on target. It's exchanging fire with this 450 line ship as well as this plasma monitor. Trying to see exactly what... There comes the beam. That's going to be one shuttle killed very, very quickly. Let's see what his teammate is doing. Up here, this one's getting fired at by the plasma line ship. Very, very unhappy about that as it takes a toasted side there. Just want to see its drive set up. Uh, does not... Dragonfly Raider. So not a not a full mobility build. It's gonna give it problems dodging that uh, that plasma at that range. Definitely, we can see the ANS team. They feel very overwhelmed at this point. They're getting shot at from multiple angles, having to deal with multiple threats. All everything on the board here is capable of killing these battleships, especially since there's plasma here. And here comes a rocket strike on the frigate. Interesting choice. I suppose they are going to leave this plasma to deal with this battleship. And unfortunately, it is completely cooked and will be taking massive, massive damage from this T-30 line ship. It's already lost its front beam. It's losing more components. When the reload comes in, and there it is, it's going to get absolutely obliterated. There goes the front. It's still pushing forward. Suppose it's charge of the light brigade time. And there it comes, just all flying in. Insult to injury, here comes the 450 Acello adding its firepower. Not that it's needed. This T100, or this T30 100 mil, more than capable. Let's see if any of these missiles hit. Size 2s. Looks like one of them will. Looks like they came out from the battleship. See if any more of them do. Nope. Oh, yep. One more hits. Shuts down a lot of the T-30 cannons. We are contesting zone Definitely buys his teammate a little bit of respite but here comes the 450 Acello at this point um, there's very little chance that the ANS can win all the points are falling to OSP they only have the two battleships which are somewhat separated uh, but more importantly lack the ability to take the fight to the OSP It would be a different situation if there was one um, objective player on the ANS team that had something like Corvettes and could go could go around and back cap. That would let the battleships kind of hang back and take the engagements at the ranges they want to. But in this situation, the the battleships have to push. They can't capture points by sitting in the back, and they do know that. But that leaves them with only one option, which is forwards. And that means the OSP can hide around rocks, can use their radar, can use all the advantages they have, wait for the prey to come to them, and then use their weapons in the best way possible, which is to peek out and just unload at, uh, it's not exactly point blank, but close enough. This battleship has no chance even Though it has plenty of restores left, and the ship firing at it has to back off, it's not going to be able to 
effect enough repairs while this 450 Acello continues to shoot at it. Meanwhile, the other battleship is being set upon by all of these shuttles, as well as this plasma. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the, the battleships needed to coordinate with their team a lot better. Um, there was a game earlier where a battleship was able to hold a flank basically by itself against the push of two 450 SLOs and a line ship and didn't even take major damage. So battleships definitely still have the ability to put out major damage and tank a lot also. But the key difference between that game and this game is this game had the plasma um, T30 combos, which are just absolutely devastating when they do go off, and also the rocket shuttles. Uh, those two weapon systems right now, I would say, are hugely contributing to whether OSP wins or loses the game. If if they opt not to take them, um, there's a stark difference in the success rate between games where they take them and games where they don't take them. Uh, I, I still haven't seen many instances where 450 line ships are able to outbrawl ANS. Uh, I've heard it's possible. But um, I, I just, I've never seen it be the case. Even when multiple, multiple uh, line ships, 450 line ships, have stacked up. Uh, <clears throat> just the armor difference and uh, the toughness and the fact that a, a bow on BB can get uh, eight barrels facing down range and engaging the line ship which has to be broadside on so really just a matter of when this player decides to hit that surrender button the and there it is oh that was Barrett waiting on blind guy so in hindsight uh, Battleships, they had good positions. There was a lack of communication, I want to say. The positional play actually between each team was pretty good. It was just a case that each of these fleets uh, on the ANS side, which got taken out, pushed up a little bit too far. And that small, I mean, under... Um, under 500 meters really was the difference. And the OSP team did a great job of keeping an eye out for when something got into range, got a little bit out of position, and they pounced on it. And they had their ranges for their weapons dialed down exactly where they needed it to be so that they could come in, push the damage onto whatever was out of position, and just pounce and destroy that right flank in particular. And without the BBs there to add the point defense support, add the suppression fire support, uh, it was really tough for them to, to do anything about that.